All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Yin's Day Yoga for the People. Um, so, uh, I'm Libby Gore. I'm the owner and operator of In the Hills, which is my um, home based or basement based rather studio um, here in Rome, Georgia. And um, I have about seven of my students in the room with me tonight um, as we record. And I've told them to ask any questions that come up uh, because I feel like if any of my regular students have questions about a posture, there are probably some of you out there in YouTube land that, that have those same questions. And um, I've always considered myself a teacher, not a leader. So that, that did not come out right. I guess I consider myself a leader, but no, I, I teach yoga as opposed to just lead it. So um, I like to get into the nitty gritty, make sure that everybody is, is good. Let me say a quick word. First, my disclaimer. You are practicing at your own risk. Please make sure that before you start any exercise program that your physician has said that it's okay. And In the Hills and Libby Gore are not to be held at risk for any injuries that you may incur. Uh, and the full disclaimer, all the yada yada will be in the description under the video. Um, Yin. Uh, if, if you're not used to practicing yin yoga, it, it's the, I mean, in all reality, it's the polar opposite to yang yoga, which is what we normally practice, where we're moving through um, postures to warm and, and stretch the body and strengthen it. Um, to try to uh, catalyze a transformation within us. That is yang yoga. Tonight is yin. And yin is all about being. And um, it is about not striving. So non-striving. And just about allowing. And um, being content. Or maybe I should use the word happy. Since we're going to be going through some little tidbits of, of wisdom on happiness, not from me, but um, tidbits of wisdom on happiness tonight, but it's being happy with whatever state you find yourself in at the present moment and accepting the fact that your present experience, A, is the only thing that exists, um, and B, that it's exactly as it's meant to be at that moment. Whether you are in a blissful state of yinness and just soaking it all in, or maybe you're even um, at a little bit of discord with the way the posture feels in your body or where your mind starts to go. But it's knowing that whatever experience you have in this moment is exactly what you should be experiencing. So when we go into our yin postures, we do not push ourselves to um, go into the deepest expression of the posture because the alchemy of yin is in duration, not sensation. So we want to find what we call the three, uh, which is, okay, you've put your body into this shape, something's happening, some form of sensation is occurring. It's just not the most profound wowing or experience that you've ever had with the posture because you're going to be in it for about five minutes and it's going to deepen as you hold and take you in a safe and effective manner up to and maybe slightly past the boundary that you had the last time you did the posture. Once again, we're not striving for that. We're accepting whatever will be. Um, but that's the idea with yin is to, to hold and just let gravity take over, let your own body just open or unfold into the posture. Um, because that's the way we work with connective tissue. Um, that's, that's the only way really to work with connective tissue. If you try to force it or move too quickly with it, it will do nothing but resist. And so you're just counterbalancing your efforts at that point. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I'm always trying to make this shorter and quicker so that we can get to the good stuff. But um, I tend to have an, a problem 
with, <laughs> with that. So I'm a talker. Anyway, um, so tonight, happiness, uh, and we'll just um, revel in the joy that is being in a posture, whatever that will be for you. So um, go ahead and come to your comfortable seated position here. Closing your eyes. And just letting your awareness drift through the different parts of your body. Beginning to release any obvious tension or strain. Or maybe even letting go of that urge to push yourself to sit taller, pull this rib in or whatever, whatever you might be compelled to do. Just let everything be soft and be. Beginning to pay attention to the movement of the breath. Recognizing the breath as your anchor into the present moment. Which after doing all of my reading on happiness to prepare for tonight's class, I believe it could be summed up as saying happiness is just recognizing that the present moment is exactly as it should be. Just letting the mind settle. If thoughts flood the mind, it's okay. Everyone experience, experiences that. But what you can do is try to be the observer of the thought as opposed to getting entangled or engaged with the thought. Sometimes I, I like to pretend like the thought is a cloud. I see it, it comes on to my radar, and then I just watch it float out. And sometimes there's another cloud thought to replace it immediately, but sometimes not. And there's no need to judge yourself for that. It's just how the mind is. And once you realize that the thought has come and gone, try to direct your awareness back to the movement of your breath, coming in at the tip of the nostrils, down to touch navel center, on the inhale and then on the exhale, traveling back up from navel center and out at the tip of the nostrils. And we'll bring our hands together at heart center. We'll inhale, reaching forward and up. And exhale, back down to the heart. Holding here to open our class with three ohms. Taking an inhale. Um. Uh, 
fourth ohm resonates within the heart space. All right, I think I got a little cricket in the grass next to me. Um, so the majority, if not, yeah, our whole sequence is on our backs tonight. Oh, I know everybody's sad about that. No, let's go ahead and come down. We're going to start in Baddha Konasana, Supta Baddha Konasana. Um, so the soles of the feet will come together now and the knees will butterfly open and you'll come down onto your back. Let me say a word about how close the feet are to the groin. When the feet are very close to the groin and I open out and butterfly, I feel it more on the inner thighs. When I send the feet away from me and make more of a diamond or, or long diamond shape, especially when I'm on my back, I feel it more in the outer hips. So I'm not going to tell you how close to bring your feet in. Let your body be the director of that. Um, so you're going to help yourself onto your back. starting to hit shade uh, oh well we'll just have a dark video tonight i need to get some lighting <laughs> all right bring the soles of your feet together and allow the knees to open out now if you allow the knees to butterfly open and it's immediately intense for you i want you to take either blankets or blocks and stuff them up under your upper thighs to hold the knees a little higher up so that it's not so intense. Because remember, five minutes, it's going to definitely um, be different when we come out than when you entered into the posture. So, and you may wanna do a little wiggle round to make sure that your pelvis um, feels okay here for the duration. Arms can either be to the sides of the body. Some people like to bring their hands to their belly to stay connected with the breath. Um, some people like to bring arms overhead. This is a little bit of a shoulder stretch, a little bit of a stretch through the belly to have the arms overhead. As usual, find what works with you. And we can settle in here, checking to make sure that you're not clenching your teeth or squeezing the top of your shoulders up. This one, we may have a tendency to squeeze in the butt cheeks to protect the hips. Try to keep everything soft and receptive. So um, I decided to, to theme the class on happiness earlier today because even in my quarantine state <laughs> um, I had the the most beautiful morning and afternoon um, with actually with friends um, yesterday I, I got into cleaning out a couple of desks and art supplies and crafting stuff and um i put them up for grabs for free on facebook and <coughs> anyway had a lot of people respond and so i had uh six different people come up and do porch pickups today and i sat uh in my front area here right at the window and got to chat <laughs> when somebody would come and pick something up off my porch i got to have a just a i mean it's a beautiful day out here i was getting to talk to my friends even though it was between or through a window um but it just really made me pause and recognize the beauty of that moment here, I, when when I was when I was deciding to just give stuff away yesterday, I thought, oh, I'll make everybody so excited and happy by, 
you know, who doesn't want free art supplies <laughs> and desk office stuff? Um, and I just thought, oh, maybe it'll bring smiles to people. And, you know, I got back so much of that myself today and I think it really speaks to just finding the beauty in the small mundane moments of our lives that's that's true happiness not you know buying a new thing or even traveling somewhere I mean those are nice and, and and they can also be joyful moments but the things that you can't you can't put the money value on and I'm sure we've all encountered that over the past few weeks with our situation just really stepping back and analyzing what parts of your life are are truly integral to to who you are and your happiness within but it was just the coolest day And I got lunch brought to me. So I've had my first non-quarantine food since March the 12th today. <laughs> and I didn't have any dishes to do afterwards. All right, if your arms are overhead, carefully bring them down and everyone use your hands to, to give the weight of your legs over to, to press your knees up to center. Now just hold here because at least in my body, the urge to purge is, is pretty great especially in my outer hips right now. The urge to purge is where you feel like you've got to wiggle around and release the sensation that was created from your posture. And yin teaches us to accept our discomfort the same that we accept our comfort as part of our experience. So we're just going to observe here. And if there is discomfort, there's no need to label it. You could say, hmm, that's a sensation. <laughs> now, I can't remember if I said this at the first, but never, never sharp pain, not good. We back out. Um, And, and you certainly never want to push yourself at the beginning of a posture into that state of having to tolerate. But, I mean, it does deepen as you're there, and so the sensation changes, that's for sure. Okay, we're going to do what is probably the exact opposite of what we just did. I'm going to turn my legs to the camera so you can see. I'm, stay on your backs, but you're going to step your feet wide, like mat's distance apart, if not if not further, and let your knees drop into the center, constructive rest here. And that is our next posture. And even though it's just, it's, it's a subtle change, um, it, it's, it's completely different in, in a posture in its own right. It, in my own body, the sensation changes from the outer hips to the very inner, inner groin hip area. Um, probably 
my innermost attachment of my piriformis muscles to the ischial tuberosity, that, that's where I'm feeling it most in my own body. Now, if you come to this posture and it's, you're, you're, you're not even at a three, you're at a one or a two, you can widen your feet even more and that'll give you more room to drop down into the center. The true secret of happiness lies in the taking a genuine interest in all the details of daily life. A genuine interest in all the details of daily life. Even on days where I don't have friends do porch pickups. I've been finding a lot of joy and happiness in cooking lately. I, I um, before quarantine, didn't really have a lot of time to cook. And so that's been a daily life task that I've really just reveled in. Again, with this one, arms can be wherever you'd like, overhead, belly, out to the sides, whatever works for you. Again, I'll remind you to try to keep the awareness focused on the breath. Try to allow the thoughts to just pass by and redirect your attention to your breath. Finding an interest in the details of the breath, present moment.
All right, if arms are overhead, draw them back down. Ooh, I'm glad I put a sweater on. It's getting chilly in the shade. Carefully open your knees up and you can heel toe your way back in. And from here, we'll move directly into Apanasana, knee to chest pose. And I'm gonna give you an option with this one. You can add a um, hip flexor stretch to this by elevating your hips on a block or a bolster um, or firm pillows. Um, so to do that, and, and this is not a requirement of the pose, this is just an option. To do that, you'll take your block, you'll lift your hips and slide your block under your under your hips and sacrum, not your low back. Now, if you have a bolster, the bolster can go into your low back. That's gentle enough to be there, but the blocks are not. So you'll want it under hips and sacrum only. Um, or you don't have to be elevated at all with the hips. It just adds an opposite leg stretch while you're drawing one knee into the chest. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to draw our right knee into our chest. You can either take hold around the knee behind the thigh, or you could bring your strap around your knee and hold on to your strap. You can leave this uh, left knee bent, or if you'd like to add that hip stretch, even if your hips are not elevated, it will add stretch by lengthening the left leg out on the mat. Ooh, I'm feeling this one definitely tonight. I've been doing a lot of hip strengthening in my own practice and wowzers. I'm looking at the wrong paper. <laughs> the greatest happiness you can have is knowing that you do not necessarily require happiness. There can be beauty in the sad times too. You wouldn't know what happiness was if you didn't experience sadness. I think it's more of accepting either at that time in your life and, you know, certainly being appreciative and having gratitude for the happy good times, but having appreciation and gratitude for the not so happy times too, because they're in so instrumental in our lives. They serve different purposes, but we can't have one without the other. And it's not an on or off thing. It's not if I'm happy, I don't know. It, it's a spectrum. <laughs> opposite ends of the spectrum on the same of the same quality Maybe take a moment to send gratitude for something that made you happy today. Something, well, I won't say made you happy because happiness comes from within. If things don't make you happy, it's how you choose to react to it. But 
if you experience happiness with something today, send some gratitude out. Gratitude is the quickest way to draw abundance into your life. And gratitude is just recognizing the abundance that already exists in your life. All right, taking a deep inhale, exhales, if you've got your left leg extended, you can bend that knee back and then slowly let your right foot float back to the mat, hold here. And we'll move into the left leg by drawing the left knee up into the chest, either taking hold around the knee, the back of the thigh, or you can bring a strap around the knee to hold there. And you can either leave right knee bent or on an exhale, lengthen out through right leg. I do encourage you that whatever you did on the last side, go ahead and um, match that on this side. I wouldn't give two different treatments unless there's, uh, you know, something wrong with one of your hips and you're having to, to work around it or something like that. But I would try to give the same treatment to both sides. It isn't what you have, or who you are, or where you are, what you are doing that makes you happy or unhappy. It's what you think about it. That's by Dale Carnegie. So it's not your situation. Situations are always changing. It's the thoughts that you put out about it, the thought energy. 
that then in turn determines the emotion. The emotional state. So it could be really easy to get bummed out about quarantine and allow ourselves to go into a state of depression or anger or we can perceive it in a different light. And like I mentioned before, saying now there's time to cook delicious meals and tend to my flower beds and schedule porch pickups. <laughs> getting really dark on the camera. Ugh. I might try to shift a little bit while y'all are still holding this posture. Let's see. So professional of me, huh? This is the first time I will have done my yoga practice in the driveway. It's the first time for everything, huh? All right. You can go ahead and release the left foot back down, bending the right knee to draw the foot back in if the leg was extended. And if you were on a support of any type, I'll go ahead and have you come off of that. Please listen to my instructions. 
You've been in a spinal extension, low spinal extension for quite a bit of time, at least 10 minutes here. And so we wanna be very careful with how we come back out of this. So if the hips are elevated right now with a support, what I want for you to do is posteriorly tilt your pelvis. So you're gonna tuck under so that it feels like your low back starts moving toward the mat and your tailbone's tucked under. You're gonna press into your feet to lift your hips staying tucked, remove your support, and then roll down through your spine, one vertebra at a time all the way to the mat. And you can put your uh, support off to the side for right now. And everybody can grab their, sh their yoga strap. Okay, if you do not have a yoga strap, no problem. Um, you just won't be doing the posture like I'm going to be showing you uh, how to do it, but I'll give you the alternative to that. So no worries. If you do have a yoga strap that you can actually bind, um, then uh, I need you to make a big loop with it. So big loop making 101. Take hold of the end of the strap. First, make sure there are no twisties in the strap. You'll send the end of the strap through the two D-rings, back in the opposite direction, over the first and through the second. How big of a loop? It's a great question. It all depends. It depends on how long your leg is, how tight your uh, hamstrings and glutes are, and low back for that matter. Um, so you'll have to play around with it. Now, if you don't have a strap that will close like this strap, um, maybe you have a scarf or a belt that you're using, uh, I'll show you how to get set up first and then I'll show everybody else how to put this big loop on. I'm gonna turn this way so that you can see my right leg. Okay, so we're gonna be down on our backs again. And if you don't have a strap that you can make a loop with, you're just going to draw your right knee into your chest. You're gonna stir up around the right foot, extend the leg up. You may wanna do a loopy around your hands so that you can just relax your arms. You do wanna hold higher up on the strap so that the weight of your arms is just kind of drawing down but don't worry about stiffening the leg or engaging anywhere. You just want the gentle weight of the arms to draw you deeper into the posture. Now, for those of you that can make a loop with your strap, then um, you're going to bring one end of the loop around your foot and you'll hook the other end of the loop around the back of your head, like a sling. So I want you to notice, especially if you're not familiar with this posture, that my head is not on the mat. It's suspended um, as if the loop is a big sling. Well, it is, it's a sling holding my head and tractioning the back of my neck while I get this amazing leg stretch here. So um, those are your two options, either just holding on, maybe looping around your hands to give you a little bit of a grip there, or you've got the loop around the back of your head. I'm gonna turn mine around so it's not hanging on the side of the camera. And once you are in position, and you found where you want to be with it, then you can add a little bit of stretch up the back of the right leg by just lengthening the left leg out on the mat. Um, that definitely intensifies it a little bit. Um, by the way, if the leg cannot go completely straight, perfectly fine to have a bend in the knee. If, if your leg can't go straight, this bent knee position is doing its job. It's still stretching. And I'm sure you already know that. 
I'm sure you can feel it already doing its job. So it's okay to have a bend in the knee if that is giving sensation to you. Um, you know, certainly if you can come straight legged, you will have the sensation up your leg as well. And you can pull this loop as small and pull that leg back as much as is appropriate for your body. Once again, you don't want to catapult yourself into this deepest sensation possible um, because we're going to be here for a few more minutes. If, if I can ever get situated, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm having trouble. <laughs> when I moved, I, all my stuff uh, got out of place. So, all right, let's see. Well, we have about happiness. Oh, let me check the time. And I know we've already been here for a couple minutes. Okay. <laughs> Learn to enjoy every minute of your life. Be happy now. Don't wait for something outside of yourself to make you happy in the future. Think how really precious the time is that you have to spend, whether it's at work or with your family. Every minute should be enjoyed and savored. I love that word, savored. That's it. That's what I was trying to say earlier. You can have sad times and savor the moment and have it have it be a mirror of happiness for you. Oh, that sound that that doesn't sound like what I wanted it to say. Oh well. I'm not a philosopher. <laughs> I do know laughter is good. Laughter is good medicine. Uh, arms can come out to the sides or overhead with this one as well, or to the belly.
All right. So to come out of this, if you've got the loopy, you're going to unhook your head. And whether you're just holding with a strap or you had the loop, you're going to use your strap to help lower your leg extended all the way down to the mat. And this is a lovely time to observe. I'm sure my students are tired of me saying it, but I always say, do you should feel about 10 feet longer on the right side. Um, another strange experience with having um, stretched one side in this manner and not the other is the right side of my body feels more sunken in, like smushed into the mat more, and the left side of my body feels higher up. But it's nice to be able to compare the sides of your body like this because you can feel what you've just released out of your body on the right side that was hiding from you. So taking pleasure in the details of imbalance right now. And we'll move over to the left leg. So um, you can move your loop over to your left. Or um, if you're strapping up without a loop, you're going to draw your left knee into your chest. Bring your strap around the left foot. Everyone extends up with the left leg. I'm sorry, right knee should be bent now. We should always go into this posture with the opposite leg bent because it deepens when we extend that leg out and um, so we kind of want to ease ourselves into that especially in a yin situation but I cue it like that in a yang class as well I think it's better to kind of tiptoe um, toward deeper postures than to just force yourself to jump into it head first so once the leg has acclimated to being up. If you would like, not a requirement of the pose, but if you would like to deepen it a little bit, you can extend out through the right leg now. And we'll settle in. Once again, arms can be over, overhead. They can be out to the sides of the body or um, Hands resting on the belly if you'd like. And they each offer something a little bit different. So maybe try them out and see which one works best for you. There can be no happiness if the things we believe in are different from the things we do. There can be no happiness if the things we believe in are different from the things we do. I would say that's living inauthentically. So happiness comes from living an authentic life. Being exactly as you are, no masks.
I don't know if y'all can hear it on the video, but there's a woodpecker going to town somewhere around here. can go ahead and unhook and use your strap to help float your extended leg down to your mat and hold it there observing the return to balance. And from here, we will do supported bridge pose. So this posture, oh, I've gotten dark again. Well, I'm not going to chase the, the sunlight again. Y'all are just going to have to see me in the shadows. Um, so um, this posture can either be done with a block. It can be done with a blanket, uh, a firm blanket. Um, or your bolster. So I don't have my bolster out here. 
Um, but I will demonstrate with my blanket and with my block. So I have my blanket folded kind of thick. I'm going to fold it again so that it's about block thickness. And this is going to go under my hips and sacrum, just like we did with um, Apanasana, knee to chest. Um, or I can take my block and do the same thing. So um, if I'm going to use my blanket, I'm going to put that, that folded blanket out to the side of my hip. And I'll press into my feet to lift my hips and kind of bring it up under to support hips and sacrum. Or I can do the same thing with a block. You may want to go on low or you can go on medium, turning the block on medium and under hips and sacrum. Once again, the block should absolutely not be in your low back. Perfectly fine for hips and sacrum, but not low back. Bolster, bolster can go into your low back. That's gentle enough, and it's actually very nice to have the low back supported. I mean, certainly it needs to be under your hips as well, but um, it can go into your low back to support your low back. Once you have come on to whatever support you're working with tonight, you're going to take an inhale, and as much as appropriate for your body, you're going to exhale and lengthen out through your legs so that you're getting a double hip um, hyperextension. Arms can be palms up out to the sides, overhead. Overhead is definitely going to deepen this one. It, it, it deepens the stretch through the psoas, pulls it up into the belly area, even though it's in the low back. Well, that, that attachment of it's in the low, low lumbar area. It feels like it's in your belly because of how it crosses the hip joint complex to attach to the upper thigh bone. Try to just relax any tension out of your legs, out of your butt. I have to keep myself from squeezing in my legs and my butt with this one. I guess that's a protective measure. I don't know, but I have to tell myself to consciously relax into this one. Let us be grateful to people who help us to be happy. They are the charming gardeners who make our souls blossom.
carefully begin bending your knees back, sliding your feet back in towards your hips. Again, we want to be very careful coming off of our support. So we'll tuck under with our pelvis, press into our feet to lift, remove our support, and roll down through our spine. We have one more posture on each side. I'm going to turn this way to the camera so you can see how to position yourself. So um, we'll start with both knees bent, lift our hips and shift them over to the right side of our mat. And then we're going to lengthen our left leg out fully. Let our right knee come up and drop into our chest. With our left hand, we'll take hold and draw the right knee across our body here. You can let the, the right foot just rest on your bottom left thigh or the mat. You don't have to hold it up in the air. And what you want to be careful of is that you don't come so much into the twist that this right shoulder rolls up and off the mat. You wanna stay grounded through the right shoulder. Happiness is not a state to arrive at but rather a manner of traveling.
ones on an inhale, you'll unwind out of this. Center your hips back up and lengthen both legs out just for a moment before we move into the other side. And this will be our last posture before Shavasana. All right, so you'll bend both knees. This time you're gonna shift your hips over to the left side of your mat. So that's literally picking them up and moving them over. So it'll feel like your feet and your shoulders are off from your hips. You'll lengthen your right leg out this time. Bend your left knee up into your chest. Take hold with your opposite right hand and you'll draw that across your body to the right, reaching open with the left arm to help keep the left shoulder grounded. Once again, the foot can either rest on the bottom leg or on the mat. Happiness is the default state. It's what's there when you remove the sense that something is missing in your life. And we'll carefully inhale, unwinding, bending both knees back. Recenter your spine. And we will move into Shavasana. By extending our legs out from our body, letting them come about mat's distance apart so that the legs are fully extended, feet are open. And you're just going to let your feet flop open like they naturally want to do. You can come arms extended, palms up, out to the sides of the body. And then kind of wiggle your way around on your shoulder so that your shoulder blades are up under you. And there's an opening in your heart. 
There's a little bit of space between the low back and your mat, which is fine. And try to balance your weight between your hips and your shoulders. Lengthen the back of your neck so that you're on that flat part of the back of your head. And then I want you to take a deep inhale and stretch your limbs as far away from you as you can, engaging everything in your body. And exhale, just melt into the mat. Making any last adjustments here, closing your eyes. Letting go, I whisper, it's okay to release. Letting go, my body says back to me, thank you. Letting go, I find a silence and a stillness so sweet. Letting go, I feel my body welcome in peace. This feeling of centeredness, groundedness, and ease becomes available anytime I'm willing to let go and welcome release.
as the sound of the bell <clears throat> enters into your awareness. Let it bring with it an awareness of your surroundings. Beginning to deepen your breath and turn your senses outward once again. Slowly begin to bring movements back into your body, starting with fingertips and toes, hands and feet, wrist and ankles, arms and legs. Whole body making movements that feel good to you. And when you're ready, make your way over onto your right side using your arm or blanket as a pillow. Remaining there for just a couple of breaths, allowing all weight off the heart. And then you can help yourself up to a comfortable seated position. We'll end where we began. I invoke favor, peace, and prosperity upon each of us this day. May we experience full restoration, nothing missing, nothing broken. That which has been taken from us physical and not may be returned to us sevenfold. And that which was once broken in our lives, bodies, minds, or spirits, may it be mended like new. May all beings be happy, healthy, and free, and may we practice with patience and no much peace. Namaste. Thank you to each of you in the room tonight for the recording. I really appreciate it. And thank you to everyone out in YouTube land that watches this um, after it's uploaded. If you enjoyed it and um, would like to comment on it below, that's always appreciated. And um, Or even if you didn't enjoy it, give me a comment. Let me know what you thought. And uh, if you don't mind liking the video and subscribing, that helps me out. Um, and everyone, be well. <laughs>